Okay. Hi, my friends. It's Miss Barbara here again today. Today is Sunday, and we're here with one of my favorite animals, the elephant. The story that I'm going to read to you today is called The Insignificant Elephant, and it was written back in 1985. I chose this book because it was one of my daughter's favorite books when they were little girls. Before I start, I wanted to tell you two interesting facts about the elephant. I'm sure you know that the elephant is the largest land living mammal that is still alive today. One really interesting fact that you might not know is that the elephant actually walks on his tiptoes. Do you know that they weigh between two and seven tons? And that makes it even more remarkable. Another really interesting fact is that the elephant, the baby elephant, stays in his mommy's belly for 22 months until he is about 260 pounds when he is born. I hope you enjoy my story. Again, it's called The Insignificant Elephant. No one noticed Humbar. You see, that was very strange because Humbar was an elephant. He lived with a herd of other elephants in the royal coconut grove around the pearlish palace of the proud Pasha Pusha of Ravidam. Everyone noticed the other elephants because they were fine, fat creatures. But no one noticed poor Humbar. He was an insignificant elephant, and that is not an easy thing to do. One day, the head of the Pearlish Palace Guard paid a visit to the Royal Coconut Grove. He waved his spear and he stamped his feet because he wanted to show how fierce he was. But he looked very worried. We have heard, he said, that the dread Januaries plan to harm our proud Pasha Pusha. But we don't know what they have in mind. We need a spy. Are there any volunteers? I think not, said the oldest elephant. Hardly, said another. You must be joking, said the third. One by one, the elephants shook their heads and they lumbered off, all except Humbar. But no one noticed that he was there in the first place. Well, I'll be a water buffalo's grandmother, sighed the head of the Perlish Palace Guard. What am I gonna do now? The other guards are too busy to spy, and so am I. He lowered his spear, and he leaned on it. Ow! yelled Humbar. I beg your pardon, said the head. I didn't notice you. Oh, that's quite all right, said Humbar. No one ever does. Oh, they don't, do they? Well, then you're the one. What could be better than a spy that no one notices? You're hired. Good luck. And in no time at all, Humbar found himself on the road to the land of the dread Januaries. It was a very long and dangerous trip to the land of the Januaries. There were footpads and highway persons and landslides and blizzards and even a tiger or two. But Humbar used his wits, and sure enough, no one noticed him. Finally, he reached the January gates, where he cleverly disguised himself as a sack of mail. He was delivered immediately straight to the Pepper Pot Palace of the Grand Poopa of January. There, Humbar crept from pillar to post. He used his eyes, he used his ears, and of course, no one noticed him. At last, in the throne room itself, he heard what he had come to hear. The helicopters are almost ready, said the Grand Poopa to the Grand Poopina. Tomorrow night they will fly to Ramadan. They will hover over the royal coconut grove, and my dread Januaries will steal every last coconut. The proud Pasha Pusha will be humiliated. He certainly will, my dear, said the Grand Pukina. He will be furious. His cooks like to use those coconuts to make his favorite coconut stew. I can hardly wait till tomorrow. I must hurry, thought Humbar. There's no time to lose. He dashed out of the Pepper Pot Palace, through the January Gate, 
past the tigers, past the landslides, past the blizzards, past the footpads and the highway persons, back to Ramadan. He got there early the next morning. Listen, listen, he panted as he skidded to the gate. I have important news. Did you hear something, said the head of the pearlish gates? I don't think so, said the assistant. Maybe there's a mosquito in the air. Maybe, said the assistant. This calls for desperate action, thought Humbar. So he cleverly disguised himself as a telephone booth. And then he rang. When the head answered, he told them about the helicopters. <gasps> oh, mercy, cried the head. What should we do? Don't worry, said Humbar. I have a plan. The head of the Perlish Palace did not want to try Humbar's plan. He thought it sounded silly, but he could not think of a better one. So the evening he went to the Royal Coconut Grove and he ordered all the elephants to go up and sleep in the Coconut Grove. I beg your pardon, said the oldest elephant. Surely you jest, said another. Oh, I mean, really, said the third. You heard me, said the head. He waved his spear and he stamped his feet to show how fierce he was. Now march. So one after the other, the elephants climbed the trees and they tried to get to sleep, but it wasn't easy. Humbar climbed to the tallest tree so he could keep watch. Finally, at midnight, he heard the helicopters buzzing and sputtering like a swarm of noisy gnats. <gasps> Wake up! They're almost here! But the other elephants did not notice him. They went right on sleeping. This calls for desperate action, thought Humbar. So he cleverly disguised himself as an alarm clock, and he rang. The other elephants woke up at once. The dread Januarys are almost here. This is what we must do. A moment later, the helicopter swooped low over the Royal Coconut Grove. At once, each of the elephants took a deep breath. <sighs> they blew, and the helicopters did not have a chance. They were blown all the way back to the land of the dread Januarys. The Grand Poopa and the Grand Poopina were humiliated and humbar was a hero. The next morning, the proud Pusha himself came to the Royal Coconut Grove to meet Humbar. Where is he? cried the proud Pasha Pusha. I am right here, said Humbar. Humbar, you're rather insignificant, you see. Not anymore, said the proud Pasha Pusha, and he fastened a huge medal on Humbar for significant for valor, for smart service in the defense of the proud Pasha Pusha and the country it read. From now on, Hamar, you will be chief spy of Ramadan. Thank you, your proud ship, said Hamar. Hamar's medal was so big that no one could miss it. And from that day on, he wore it all the time, except when he didn't want to get noticed. I hope you guys enjoyed the story today. I will be back tomorrow with another one of my favorites. Have a great day.